Hi guys, it's Mark Zickery, Mr. Sci-Fi, also known as Mark Zickery of Space Command. And I'm here on my balcony of my apartment that I've rented in Cannes, France, while I, where I've been attending the um, MIP TV television conference. It's a conference for the worldwide TV industry that I attended a year ago and then six months ago and now. And I want to tell you all about what's going on. It's really an interesting story. This is for my backers, for my investors, and also for all the Mr. Sci-Fi fans and anyone else who cares to listen. But it's really um, an interesting study of what's happening in the world of television around the world and, um, and sci-fi in particular. And uh, I've, I've, I'm learning a lot, and I've been having amazing meetings. I'm going to tell you all about it. I'm going to start at the very beginning because it's a little bit of a twisty-turny story. And, uh, and I think you'll find it pretty interesting, particularly those of you who are interested in, in either me or, or television or Space Command or any of it. Uh, so, essentially, here's what, uh, as, as you all know, or many of you know, I've been shooting a big science fiction project called Space Command. When I was 10 years old, uh, Star Trek came on the air. I was given a Christmas present of a trip to the Star Trek set. I was a huge Star Trek fan. I recorded the episodes on reel-to-reel -reel audio just in case they would never air again because... Um, uh, we didn't have VCRs when I was a kid. There was no way to preserve a show, and if it ran for one season, you would never see it again. And so this was my way of making sure I would be able to revisit those stories, even if Star Trek was a huge crashing failure. Unfortunately, it wasn't. Oh, by the way, science fiction, I'm wearing my John Carpenter's The Thing t-shirt and, and my Iron uh, Meteorite, which I wear around my, my uh, neck to say this is where I'm writing about space, and this is something that came from space. So, uh, so back to Star Trek. So when I was 13, I read The Making of Star Trek, a great book, which I highly recommend. And, uh, and it gave me the idea of becoming a writer-producer. And my ultimate goal was to create my own science fiction show, ideally a space-going show. And that's what I've been doing with Space Command. And so uh, we raised 221000 on crowdfunding. We've been selling investment shares at $7,500 a share. People are still sending me shares. Someone called me. Uh, in uh, here in France, and they bought another share, and so uh, seventy five hundred bucks a share, and uh, you get part of uh, of my of my uh, producer's net profit. So it's pretty cool. And so if anyone's interested in, in investing in Space Command, please do, because when we sell the show, we will not be selling investment shares anymore. So and I'm pitching the show now, and it's um, it's a fascinating thing because you know I, I've I've had hundreds of hours of network TV uh, credits and. Uh, you know, Star Trek Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, you guys all know what I've done and who I am. And, uh, and uh, you know, I've, I've basically built my career learning how to run TV and how to make memorable television and, and take a stand that, that Ted Sturgeon and Harlan Ellison and George Clayton Johnson and Rod Serling and Charles Beaumont and Richard Matheson all taught me to take. That uh, the television is a, is a great opportunity, a golden um, responsibility. And we all need to create something that matters and that makes the world better, in my in my humble opinion. So, uh, so I, I, you know, as you know, we've shot two hours of Space Command. We're in post on that two hour first two episodes of Space Command, the two hour story, Redemption. Uh, our VFX team. We have we have Tobias Richter in Germany. We have Nicholas Alanis in Italy, and we have uh, uh, the t the twins. What I call the twins, they're two brothers, uh, Zach and um, and Brennan. Uh, with Threshold Films and their compositor, uh, and uh, they're they're hunkered down in a house in L.A. They've moved from New York, and they're cr you know grinding out spectacular, amazing shots. We're finishing the first 33 minutes of Space Command, uh, color correction, special effects, you know VFX VFX uh, shots, all of that. It's uh, before I left for France. I, I went over to their house. I saw the shots they're generating. They're, they're amazing. They're remarkable, and uh, I'm just. I'm incredibly pleased, and uh, and I think you will be too. So we're we're and we're sending out all the the backers stuff. I mean the T-shirts, posters, pack, you know, um, um, trading cards, lobby cards. You know, still still certain things left to be made and sent, but we're we're getting it done. We're getting it done. Thank God. Thank God. And uh, so, uh, so here's the thing. In 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 my my goal all all along has been to r make Space Command wonderful, uh, cast actors that I loved. Etc. Etc. Do bring my A game to this, as I bring it to everything, and uh, and so the steps were shoot Space Command. We've also shot 30 minutes of the second one, Space Command Forgiveness. We're editing that now. It's coming out great. Uh, we're going to be building the uh, the alien interior, the alien sleeper ship, uh, the alien sleeper ship, and uh, I've been designing that with Ian McCaig and uh, my friend who created Darth Maul and Queen Amidala, 
And if anyone wants to help build sets, we're here in Los Angeles. So I'm in France now, but I'll be in Los Angeles in a few days. And uh, just give a holler. Uh, every, every little bit helps. And if anyone has access to big pieces of round, oblong, strange shapes of, am of plastic, amber plastic or plastic that can be lit from behind to be amber, um, that'd be very, very useful. So let me know if you could, or if you can cast it. That would be very, very useful. We'll, we'll talk more when you, when you get in touch with me. 323-363-1259, markzikri at gmail.com. Uh, so I digress. And that's probably what a T-shirt should say that I wear that I wear all the time, dropped my phone, a technical glitch. But uh, anyway, so to continue, to continue, and that's France behind me, by the way, wonderful country. Uh, so, um, so a year ago, so basically the steps in, in Space Command, selling Space Command, making Space Command, all that, first step was reach out to the audience, raise the money, shoot the film, you know, well, you reach out to the audience, raise the money, build the sets, make the studio, you know, the physical uh, soundstage, uh, cast it, shoot it, all that, edit it, generate VFX, all that things we're doing. And um, second step, in Hollywood, to sell a show, a mistake many people make, particularly first-timers or people who don't know how it works in Hollywood, they assume that a great idea uh, or a great script that Hollywood will recognize that. And there's a great joke in Hollywood uh, that many of us tell each other, which is uh, it's uh, two agents are walking down a hallway toward each other, and the first one says, I just read that script that was submitted. And the second one says, well, what do you think? And the first agent says, uh, I don't know, no one else has read it. <laughs> and the meaning of that, the reason we all laugh, is because Hollywood doesn't recognize what's great usually. Hollywood needs to have enough clues or things that tell them. It's basically who believes in this thing, who thinks it's terrific, what makes it a, a slam dunk where they're not going to risk their jobs or their position or their standing. So, so with Space Command, my goal first was to shoot it, make it wonderful. Second step was there's only six agencies in, in uh, Hollywood that matter when it comes to series television. So I had to lock down one of those as my representative. So now I'm rep by CAA, which is one of the six, a well, big one. And uh, that gives me great credibility. It allows me to get meetings. And um, because people always say, well, with your credits, can't you just call and get a meeting? My God, no, no, not at all. In fact, if I call, my credits are like, like I'm hallucinating. It's like it doesn't matter at all. But if I say I'm rep by CAA, then yes, I can get the meetings. It's, Hollywood is a crazy town, crazy town. Uh, so, uh, but then the second step was, you know, lockdown, lockdown agency rep representation, then start getting the meetings, start pitching space command. Now, part of that will be... Um, pitching to production companies that can bring um, financing, that can bring affiliations, that can help sell the show to a network, or the others to go directly to the network. And there's no, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a chicken or the egg situation. Either one will work. And uh, so doing both makes a lot of sense because as all the, and fortunately Frank Spotnitz has been mentoring me, uh, who created Man of the High Castle. He ran X-Files. He has four shows on the air now, including Ransom on CBS. And he, a uh, great guy, wonderful guy. And I'm being mentored by many others. Many others are advising me. Uh, my friend Mark Fergus, who runs The Expanse, uh, uh, Damon Lindelof, who created, co-created Lost, et cetera, et cetera. You know, you know the guys I know. So, um, but uh, I often joke that I collect showrunners, but it's it's absolutely true. So, um, so, so a year ago, you know, I run this roundtable. It's made up of writers, directors, actors, producers, and a year ago. One of the members, uh, Mike Reynolds, who's a, uh, a journalist with the BBC, uh, he, uh, he said he was going to MIP, this trade show I hadn't heard about, and he, he said he was renting a villa, and would I like to come? And I could just ship in on, on the villa, and I'd have my own room and my own bathroom, and it just sounded perfect. And the interesting thing about how Mike came to be a part of the table was, um, uh, you know, my round table is several thousand people. It's writers, directors, actors, producers, all. You know, I started it 24 years ago. We meet every Thursday at a restaurant in the Valley. It was to create a, um, a uh, compassionate, supportive environment in Hollywood because I don't just want to complain about something. I want to do something about it, both in my art and in my life and in my work and all of that. And, uh, and it's, it's thrived. It's worked. So I, uh, the BBC was doing a radio documentary on Twilight Zone and Rod Serling. And I'm the world's expert on those subjects. So um, Mike contacted me to be interviewed. So I went to his lovely house uh, in, uh, in, in uh, Coldwater Canyon. And um, uh, he interviewed me. And I said, as I do to many people who I run across, I say, I run this roundtable and you'd be more than welcome and you should come. Never expecting him to do it because uh, this guy's with the BBC. He's, uh, he's, he's, he's urbane. He's, <laughs> he's classy. <laughs> he's uh, he's aristocratic. And, uh, and I thought, well, you know, 
I'll invite him, but he won't show. And then he started coming, and he brought his partner Howard with him. Uh, Howard's a journalist with uh, a a ABC Radio, and they're, they're partners, business partners. Uh, they're 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 not they're both happily married. So, uh, but um, but so they started coming every week, and now they're stalwarts. They've been coming for over a decade, and they're stalwarts at the table. So, um, uh, so that was great. So, um, so Mike invited me to MIP. So I was very nervous about going the first time, and to the degree that I called my friend Mike Tennyson, who's a writer, and uh, we coach each other. And I said, I'm nervous about going to France. I've never done this before. And Mike said, I'm going to walk over to my refrigerator, and I'm going to read some a saying that's held there by a magnet, and it'll, you know, hopefully it'll it'll buck you up. So he walked over there, and the and the the, the, the quote he had on his refrigerator was, "The bolder I am." the better things go. And the person who had said it was me. <laughs> so, so I thought, well, you know, if I'm, if I'm saying this, I better do it. You know, so I'm, I'm getting a bit of a light source. Here we go. Uh, even though France vanishes, you just have to trust I'm still in France. So, um, so the better I am, the, the, the bolder I am, the better things go. So I thought, well, if I said that, I better do it. So I actually wrote it and taped it to the inside of my wallet. And every time I open my wallet, I see it. So, um, so off I went to France. So, um, so that first time, the initial f few minutes, uh, it was very, very difficult. Like, I tried to get meetings beforehand. That didn't work. I, um, I tried to get meetings there. That wasn't working. Then while I was there, John Levin at CAA announced he was going to be my agent. And uh, or, you know, he was in conversation with me. He read some scripts I, I wrote that he liked a lot. And, uh, and the fact that he was repping me, the fact that there were other things happening that were very credible, I started slowly but surely to get meetings. Now, in addition, Frank Spotnitz, my friend who created Man of the High Castle was at MIP, and he met with me uh, over 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 tea, and uh, and he was terrific. He's a great guy, and he said, um, you know, there's there's a dozen people you should meet with in 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 London, and he wrote down the names of the companies, and um, there's some of the obvious ones: BBC, ITV, etc. Channel 4, and all these production companies making the greatest shows on earth, uh, the greatest British shows, uh, often co-productions with America. And I said, well, can I use your name? And he was kind enough to say yes, and that's incredibly gracious of him. And uh, so, um, so within two weeks I flew to England, and I had 20 meetings. And uh, everyone liked me, everyone asked for my work, they read my work, they loved it. And then I flew back for follow-up meetings, and Elaine was there with me, and we started both having meetings and on TV shows and features, and, uh, and I started gaining executives who were friends and allies. And I had 29 meetings on those follow-up meetings, so in total, in a period of about a month, I had 49 meetings in London. And fortunately, one of our dear, dear, dear investors in Space Command has a, a guest house at, in London, in uh, Hampstead, they let us uh, stay at for free, and very kind. And, um, and it made this all possible. Meantime, Elaine uh, got a producers aboard one of her feature scripts that were aboard as producers on, and she's a writer-director on it, The Voiceless Roar. And they had a project with Lord Peter Hain, a member of Parliament. Uh, he wrote a memoir about his family. They're, uh, they're, um, they were activists in South Africa, and so it's a project called Subversive. His mom was thrown in prison. And Elaine, of course, is a socialist. Her parents were communists, and Peter, Lord Peter Hain is a socialist. And so we met with him in Parliament. We got along like a house fire, particularly him and Elaine. And, and he's a great guy. And so now the money has come through where Elaine is being hired to write that movie. So we're going to be going to England and South Africa to research it. And we're aboard that as producers with two UK producers. So amazing. Then six months after MIP, I went again. And it was getting easier to get meetings. And it was getting easier because people started to know me. And, um, and uh, I wasn't just p pitching Space Command because not all of the, these companies uh, were, were doing space going science fiction. But... But I realized that if I sell anything to anyone, that money can be funneled back into Space Command so I can make more Space Command, I can finish what we've shot, we can get everything to everyone who's <laughs> waited so patiently. So, so there's, a, there's a plan to what I'm doing. And uh, so now it's a year later from when I first went to MIP, and here I am back in Cannes, and, uh, and it's been an amazing, amazing few days. And uh, here's a, I just wanted to read a list of the companies I've met with because they all liked me. They all requested material. So these companies, and these are all major companies. They're doing major, major, major television series. And some of them are networks as well. So I'll just go down the list. Uh, and this was over a three-day period. Th these are the companies I met with, many, many people. Some of these companies you'll know, some not. But if you look at the credits on your favorite TV shows, you will see these companies are making most of your favorite shows. So it's, so it, it's all three. I am global. Beta, which is a German company. Federation. Cineflix. Lionsgate. 
Hoplite Entertainment, which is a company that's just gearing up. Legendary Entertainment, which you've seen on a lot of big movies, and now they're moving into TV. Red Arrow, another German company. Duchess Street, a, a British company. Atlantique, a French company. Uh, the International Emmy Academy, who give out the International Emmys, which look exactly like the real Emmys, uh, has, has approached me to be a judge, and so we'll see how that goes. Uh, but uh, content media, Keshet, which is an Israeli company, I, and uh, I, think they, I think they may have originated Homeland, Homeland. I'm not sure there was an Israeli version and then an American version. I think they're the company that did. I'm, I'm, I'd have to check my, my notes. Uh, CBC, Dynamic Television, which again is a big, big company based in LA, Paris, and, uh, and Berlin. Uh, Miramax, Aspect Film, um, uh, PAC TV, which is a, a British organization that helps British producers um, link up with foreign money, like Chinese money. And we're, we're establishing, by the way, we're creating a company over Space Command Studios called Better Angels to make our TV shows and films, particularly Elaine's films. And um, uh, so we'll have offices in um, LA and Dallas and, and London. And so we're, we're, we're expanding considerably. And Better Angels, of course, is from the, the Abraham Lincoln quote, the better angels of our nature, which is um, uh, uh, from you know he, he it's basically we, our, our goal is to create tv shows and movies that inspire and so that's you know that's the plan so um also um amazon talk to people from amazon they're going to be taking me to lunch back in la itv a huge company um endemol shine another huge company um i met this guy who bills himself as the uh, digital prophet he's with aol and so we we talked he's in new york but he'll be coming out to la lookout point which is a big production company owned by the bbc had great meetings there and interestingly enough damien keogh Who's um, who's one of their their executives and very friendly, wonderful guy. He uh, he looks exactly to me at least uh, like Robin Hughes, who's the actor in The Howling Man, who's behind bars. So if you ever Google Damien Keogh and, and and Robin Hughes, you'll see a remarkable resemblance. But I've sent the, him those photos from the Twilight Zone. <laughs> uh, met with um, BBC. Uh, met with A um, um, and E. Met with DRG, a, a, another big company. Um, ben, um, there's um, a company called Benchmark. I'm going to be meeting with back in Los Angeles or, or London, one or the other. Um, additionally, uh, uh, STX, which is a, a big feature company, they're moving into TV. Um, I also got to see Frank Spot, and it's again while I was here, and he was so encouraging. It was wonderful. I managed to get into this invitation-only drama summit, which is the heads of the networks from around the world. It's invitation only. The regular attendees can't go, but I managed to use my charm superpower to get in. I've gotten into the previous two times as well and made amazing contacts. And so I was talking to the heads of networks. And at one point, um, the, the, the CEO of All3, which is a big TV company, um, came up to me. She wanted to have a meeting with me to set a meeting. And Frank kindly, kindly came up behind her and said about me to her, uh, this is the most interesting man in the room. Well, that's, wow, that's huge. That's huge. This is, I think he said this is the most interesting person in the room because it was men and women. So uh, um, additionally, I, I talked with someone from AMC, someone from E1, um, uh, and um, um, ZDF, which is another German firm. Um, gosh, it just went on and on. You know, UTA, they, Peter, Peter Benedict was there. I got to have a chat with him. He's a, he's a big agent. And again, these, and sometimes, you know, sometimes you're not even having people partner with you or, t or, or represent you. Sometimes it's just about getting a, um, people who can be advisors and you can swap stories and, you know, you, you, you learn from your mutual experiences. So, so, so that's, I found that enormously useful. Also, Banerjee was here, um, spoke, with, spoke with them. Um, uh, Fremantle. Um, I'm, I'm looking for someone at Netflix, so I haven't found the executive yet at Netflix. They're, they're somewhere I do, definitely want to go. I've been talking to people who've been selling them series, so I'm, I'm moving in on, on finding that person. And, and Mike, Mike Harney and I are going to get together, of course, because he's in Space Command and Orange is the New Black. So I'm sure we'll find that right person. But if, you, if you, any of you know uh, someone at Netflix who you think would be good for me to talk to, get in touch. Get in touch. Um, and uh, so that, those were some, some of the companies. We can see it's, so I'm, they all love me. They all requested material. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. But it was an amazing, amazing, amazing time. And meantime, I'm rewriting uh, Space Command 3, uh, working on that. Uh, we're going to be shooting a trailer for that soon. Uh, and so if anyone wants to build sets or wants to come help shoot it, again, get in touch. Um, what else can I tell you? So um, that's, that's kind of the main thing. I fly, I fly home tomorrow. Uh, with a 13-hour with a layover in Stockholm for some crazy reason. Uh, these air, the airlines are extremely peculiar, but I'm very glad I came here. I'm very glad uh, you're here with me in, in spirit. Uh, none of this would be happening if not for, for you. Uh, you have no idea what your encouragement and what your friendship and what supporting Space Command has meant to me. Um, I, uh, 
you know, it's, it's, it's so interesting when you're able to green light yourself, thanks to your audience. Uh, you don't have to jump through hoops. So many people I know are, are working on shows they hate or doing material that's crap. And I've, I've never done that. I've never chosen to do that. Uh, I only work on things that have meaning to me. That's always been the case. But now, thanks to uh, crowdfunding and the internet and all these wonderful new tools, I, uh, I don't, you know, I can just say this is what I want to do. And the audience says, okay, here, here, let's do it. And I, I, I'm grateful to all of you. So, so that's it for now. Mark Sikri, Mr. Sci-Fi. Mark Sikri from Space Command. Um, it's an amazing adventure. We, and, and, you know, one of the reasons why it's taking a long time is because you have to build trust. You have to build credibility. We're asking these, these executives, you know, to, if they buy Space Command to put up millions and millions of dollars. I mean, I mean for instance, just to give you an idea, uh, Westworld, 10 episodes cost $100 million. 25 million of that was the first episode. Uh, uh, the, the Queen Elizabeth TV series that, was, that just aired uh, on, on the net Netflix was 145 million for 20 episodes. Now, Space Command won't be nearly that expensive, but even so, we're talking millions of dollars. And so, so it's, it's not, no small thing. And so they have to get to know, know you over time. They have to get to trust you. And, and often it's the, and now they all know each other too. And so if I say, well, this person from this company can team with this person from that company and this person from that company, and so maybe it becomes an American, you know, English, Italian, German, you know, French, you know, Chinese co-production or whatever, and then all of a sudden we've got a show. So, so that, that's some of it. It's an international market. It's a fascinating world. You never used to have international co-productions on TV series. That was what movies did. But... Um, but here we are, 21st century, 2017. Two more years, Blade Runner, we get our flat flying cars and our replicants. We get to live on the off-world colonies, <laughs> let's hope. But, uh, or at least we'll get to see Blade Runner 2049, uh, which um, uh, we'll see, we'll see. It could be Aliens, which is one of the greatest sequels ever made, or it could be The Two Jakes, which was the sequel to Chinatown, and who remembers that? So um, that's it for now. Thanks very much. Subscribe to the Mr. Sci-Fi channel uh, if you, uh, want to get all your stuff from Space Command, uh, get in touch with me. And um, that's about it. Thanks very much, guys. We'll talk really soon. Bye-bye.